Good morning, Jimmy McKenna from Respiratory Therapy. Going to give a little review of ABGs, how to read them, how to treat them. Make sure if you have any questions, I'll get my email up at the end. You can email me if you have any questions about the stuff I've taught over or any ABG questions. The biggest thing about arterial blood gases is you got to see a lot of them, and you got to see them almost every day you work to get, get a really good sense of what's going on with them, and that's the problem. A lot of times uh, on the nursing floors, even in an emergency department um, or ICU, you, you've got to see a lot of ABGs, good ones and bad ones, to have an idea of what you need to do if you need to call a physician um, or if it's something that uh, you can start now or respiratory therapy can start now to help this patient out. And then, uh, you know, we'll go through a few of those things. So I'm going to start off uh, just going through some just kind of the normal values for the ABGs and what we're mainly looking at now at Ivy Tech. Uh, in respiratory therapy program, we're taught a specific way to read ABGs. It's a little different than what most uh, programs are taught. Um, a lot of, most nursing programs and whatnot are taught. So um, I'll kind of show you the way that, that I was taught to read ABGs, and uh, we'll go through the reading first, then we'll talk a little bit about um, interpreting and um, actually treating those problems. So we'll start here uh, with pH. Of course, we know normals on pH 7.35 to 7.45. Okay, that's pretty easy. We know PaCO2. Well, it's P little a CO2. What that little a stands for, just for your own knowledge, that's arterial concentration. The partial pressure of CO2 in the arteries. That's pretty easy, too, because that's 35 to 45. Well, it looks like these numbers right here, right? So they transpose down, so it's pretty easy to remember those normal values. This is measured in millimeters of mercury or tor. And, of course, pH doesn't have units. Um, PAC, oh, PaO2, 80 to 100 is just the general normal value for that. The thing about PaO2, this has nothing to do with the acid-base balance. This is kind of its own little thing. It's that um, We look at PaO2, we look at oxygen saturation. That's going to give us uh, a good indication of how well they're oxygenating. Doesn't have anything to do with the acid base balance and uh, ventilation. And the last one is bicarb. And it is 22 to 26. It varies for wherever you're from. Um, I'm pretty sure the Union Hospital normal values are 22 to 26. Uh, we're going to use these today. So, these are normal values. It's good to know this so you know which way we're going. So, now, you need to know if, what happens if you're below 7.35 or you're above 7.45. So, if you're below, you're going to be an acid. If you're above, you're going to be alkalonic. I'll write alk on there. Now, which way does it go for CO2? If it goes above 45, you're going to be an acid. If you go below, you're going to be an alk. So, alkalinic or acidic. Now, with bicarb, let's go above and below that also. So, uh, below it's going to be acid, and above it's going to be alkalinic. So, this is going to help me get my initial reading of an ABG. Now, I want to know about three different things about a blood gas. So, I'm just going to put three blanks here. And you probably want to know right here, is it acidosis or alkalosis. Those are our two options for that one. This middle section is going to be respiratory or metabolic. And this one's going to be compensated or uncompensated. Okay, now this is great information, Jimmy. You know, I'm out of school. I don't need to know this junk anymore. Well, this helps to get you to the point where you can read them, interpret, and also find a possible treatment for them. So, a lot of people kind of get bored with this part, but this is actually pretty exciting to me, at least. So, let's get a, a blood gas just to start off with. Let me just give you one. Let's go 7.32. Uh, and 24. So, in this case, we're writing it pretty much in this order. This is pH, CO2, PO2, and bicarb. So, let's go through this and tell me what's normal. Um, and what's acid and what's alkalinic. So at first right here, we'll start with this would be acid, okay? Because that's below 7.3, that's 
acid, and then this is normal. Okay, and this is normal, but you know, remember this is the PA, PaO2 doesn't have much to do with the acid base balance. So, in this case, you're going to see this is the respiratory component. You always think of CO2 as respiratory, and the bicarb is always the metabolic. So, we know we have an acidosis because whatever this is goes right here. Okay, so that's acidosis. And what are we going to blame the acidosis on? Well, we have two options. We have respiratory, we have metabolic. Well, in this case, this matches this, so it's going to be respiratory. And at this, you're going to say, okay, are we compensated or not? What that means is, is the bicarb trying to help out at this time to bring this pH to normal? Now, right now, we're not compensated. We're uncompensated. To make this compensated, what's going to have to happen? Our bicarb is going to have to raise into the alkalinic. It's going to have to raise into the alkalinic, let's say it goes up into the 28 range. So that would make this alk. So in that case, it's still a respiratory acidosis, but instead, since this is trying to help out, it changes it to compensated. So back with our initial one. All right. So this blood gas here is going to show an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Well, what the heck does that mean? So what we're going to do, we know that CO2 changes quickly, very quickly. And bicarb changes slower than that. And it's usually over hours. So what's going on in this situation? You think about it, for some reason, they're retaining CO2. So they're not ventilating properly um, for some reason. And has it been going on a long time? No, because bicarb hasn't changed at all yet. Now, patient stays in this state for a few hours. This bicarb is going to slowly increase to try to bring this to normal. That is the ultimate goal of the body, is to get this to 7.40. So we know that. Uh, CO2 changes quickly, bicarb changes slowly. This is going to be a, I would call it acute respiratory, ac respiratory acidosis. You call it acute respiratory failure. So in this case, you need to find out what the problem is. Maybe you just gave them um, a large dose of medication, uh, some kind of narcotic or something. It's slowing their breathing rate down, making their tidal volume smaller. They're going to start retaining CO2. Maybe it's somebody that has a really bad pneumonia that's been doing well for a couple days, but they just got uh, acutely um, tachypnic. And if you draw a blood gas, you can see, yeah, they're breathing fast, but is it working? No. So we need to think about what we're going to do at this point. So what you can do at this point, first, first of all, you would probably want to call a physician let them know, hey, we've got a patient that has some respiratory acidosis. Uh, we're, going to we're going to start with, let's say, with the BiPAP. So, you know from the BiPAP video we did back in January, um, BiPAP is going to help to blow off that CO2. Uh, it works non-invasively, so we want to put the endotracheal tube down. So BiPAP works really good in this situation, kind of get them over the hump and to get this back to a normal range. Now, if the patient you have the same blood gas and the patient is lethargic, um, you know, just doesn't look very good at all, maybe is is uh, very hypotensive. You're also going to think about securing the airway in that case, whereas you're going to go intubation and uh, put on a ventilator. Uh, commonly, this blood gas is showing you that, hey, you need to get something done pretty soon before this gets a lot worse. So there's my initial one. Now we'll put up another example. Okay, so here's an example I want, after we're finished, we're going to talk about what kind of patient this could be on. You're going to see this in, in uh, just a fair, a fair number of patients here. We have 7.12, that's going to be acid, right? So we're going to name these things. This is going to be alcohol.